Hello, good morning, everyone. Sachin Soni is an associate professor at Faculty of Architecture, SEPT University. He has taught at SEPT and National Institute of Design as a visiting faculty, as well as a practice as an architect for three years before joining as full-time faculty member in 2008. Since then, he has been involved in teaching architecture and urban design studios, history and theory of architecture, and visual studies with an emphasis on conceptualization and development of design language. Inspired by thinkers like Richard Sennett, Jane Jacobs, and Patrick Giddes, during his postgraduate studies in city design and social science at London School of Economics, Sachin is passionate about the idea of crafting inclusive habitats and has keen interest in exploring alternative paradigms for inclusive urban spaces in Indian cities. Currently, he is also the program coordinator for the UG program at Faculty of Architecture. Welcome, Sachin. Looking forward to your talk. Uh, thank you, Nilosha and Anjali, for uh, this opportunity. I think uh, it is wonderful to um, again be here. Uh, and I think in, in, in time of uh, isolation, I think this is a... a, a a wonderful relief. Um, and I would like to share my work. I think um, uh, what I'm going to show today is again, um, uh, not uh, my the city side of me, uh, but uh, other side of me as a teacher of uh, um, history and uh, um, uh, studios, design studios. Um, so that's, some, that's, that's something which I'm going to kind of talk about. The title of the talk is uh, Conundrum of Architectural Language. And I think in this, um, I would say that um, for, for an academician, uh, any work is always a work in progress. So I think what I'm gonna to share today is my journey um, till now uh, in this particular aspects of architecture, uh, looking at architecture and language uh, and um, some of you I can see uh, in the list you know, of the participants are uh, equally, uh, you, know, you have uh, been part of this journey together with me. So I think again, uh, uh, most of what I'm going to share today uh, is something which uh, most of you would uh, know it uh, or would have been part of it directly or indirectly. So uh, without, without uh, taking much time, I'm going to share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. All right. So uh, the title of the talk uh, is going to be Conundrum of Architectural Language. Now, um, now conundrum is, is something which, is, which also uh, uh, talks about my state of mind uh, when, when I discuss about architectural language. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not and I'm, as, I, as, I, as I told you before, you know, there is no certainty over here. And therefore, there is this confusion. There is this uh, notion of the, uh, conundrum of architectural language, which when, when I think about architecture. So I'm going to start with something which I think perhaps everyone of us know. Architecture is a language. And I think uh, you have to have a grammar in order to have language. If you are good at that, you speak a wonderful prose. And if you are really good, you can be a poet. That was Mies van der Rohe. And I think uh, you know, he, he, he looked at uh, you know, uh, using, you know, he was looking at architecture as a language. Um, and uh, which was wonderful because uh, that is something which, which has inspired me to kind of look at architecture as a language, um, but not in terms of a literal sense, but as analogy. Now, when we talk about architecture and language uh, in analogical terms, it is not only uh, Mies van der Rohe who, who, who explored uh, architecture as language. Um, if you, if you go back to history, um, no, this has been always uh, one of the ways uh, in which uh, architecture is uh, codified. Uh, no? And I think that's, that's something which, which uh, 
is is uh, also a matter uh, of uh, debate uh, since the time of uh, Vitruvius uh, to as recent as uh, in seventies uh, uh, the work of uh, uh, Jeng's uh, theoreticians like Jeng. Um, so I'm going to kind of look at architecture uh, as a language, the analogy of using language uh, and architecture, and we'll see what are the kind of comparisons. And then we'll see the journey um, through which we can take this thing and understand this much more. Now, what is a language? No, uh, see, uh, no, no, it is primarily a mode of communication. Uh, this is something which, which, uh, no, uh, by by virtue of what we are discussing right now, we have something which is shared. That's one of the reasons why what I speak, uh, maybe you do understand. No? So it is again selection and combination of vocabulary, you know, uh, which we which we have agreed upon, uh, and or elements. And I think this is something which becomes uh, the base uh, for looking at language. Language means, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, something which has a capacity to express something, uh, and again it has. Uh, uh, a wide range of uh, shared vocabulary. I think these are two very important aspects in which we need to understand about language when we want to use this analogy. Now, if you look at any language, there are three parts to any language. You know? One is this idea of syntax. You know? Syntax means the physical. Uh, so what do you mean by syntax? What would consist of syntax uh, if we talk about language? That would mean uh, vocabulary. That means uh, you know, uh, the actual material. Uh, you, know? uh, you mean alphabets, you mean words. You know? uh, then there is grammar. That is the rules of combination. You know? uh, how do you bring them together? You know? What do you add uh, in what proportion? Where, what comes first? You know? uh, it kind of uh, um, uh, you know, brings us back uh, to this uh, very thick uh, red book uh, during the school time, Ren and Martin, uh, the memories which for some of us uh, are still haunting. But uh, still, um, so one aspect is uh, the, the material itself, which is the vocabulary. Uh, second is the notion of grammar, which is the rules of combination. Within this syntax is essentially more about what you call morphology. Morphology means form. Uh, it is study of form. So uh, in language, it is the words uh, which which gives form, you know, which are the primarily building blocks uh, or uh, what I call uh, you know, uh, primarily morphs, uh, which which come which are combined together in some sort of pattern. So when we look at the syntax part of a language, then we have um, uh, the notion of what is a part and what is an whole. So, for example, you know, as I'm speaking, you, know, you will see that the sentences are essentially formed you know, with, with the phrases, uh, which are again formed to words, words which are formed through a specific combination of alphabets. So, there is a certain kind of system which is there, a system which is again a sequential system uh, and it follows a certain sense of hierarchy so that is one aspect of language and uh, if you look at architecture uh, in in that sense or if you look at music in that sense or if you look at paintings in that sense uh, you do find that kind of system of combination you see the morphology as well as patterns of combination now, this, uh, no, no, essentially what I'm going to talk about is the morphology part of it. No? A lot of people have talked about it in various ways. No? So if you try to see Vitruvius or if you try to see Jenks, then we do see that they, they, they have played very uh, strong um, emphasis uh, on morphology. Whereas if you try to see uh, thinkers uh, such as uh, uh, um, uh, such as uh, Christopher Alexander is looking at patterns. So again, looking at this idea of uh, no, his, his seminal work on, on, on the idea of pattern language. Uh, so again, a lot of thinkers have look, looked at this particular analogy of architecture uh, and language in many ways. But essentially, it is to do with looking at relationship between whole and parts. 
the second part which would be very very interesting for all of us is this idea of uh, semantics you know that means for any language uh, it means something you know this is the idea of communication so how do you look at meanings now meanings uh, can be uh, you know like the words themselves uh, Uh, in themselves would have meanings. Uh, you know, when I say cow, that means there is there is it means something. Uh, when when you combine them, you know, when you combine these words uh, together, uh, you know, to form a sentence, it would mean something. So in the same way, you know, the question over here would be, you know, in, in architecture, when we again talk about the building blocks of architecture, when we talk about the morphology of architecture. do each of these things would vocabulary mean something would uh, the grammar mean something and this has been again um, one of the very contagious issues in 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 the history of architecture and this is something which uh, we normally talk about or we normally uh, think about when we design so that is the second part and the third part is pragmatics which is to do with the expression uh, and perception no? what do you know when 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 we say that um, no the words mean something no uh, uh, so how is it received no uh, by uh, the the user or person who is going to hear something no? if for example in music um, in in uh, so in language it becomes very precise in some ways no there is a certain sort of precision which is it because it is the primary mode of language is uh, no the intention is to um, uh, communicate in architecture uh, or in music or in other fields of art uh, is it uh, no is is that the primary mode that is also one of the questions which uh, a lot of um uh, architectural theoreticians have argue so this analogy as i say is like analogy and not a literal uh, comparison between a language and architecture now the word architecture and language is also used if any of you uh, who would be interested or have tried their hand with coding you know? so uh, for the software uh, part of 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 uh, uh, in in software design Uh, you do use this terminology uh, which is to do with architecture which is essentially to do with organization of these blocks uh, and this idea of language uh, no, no so it is also used uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, in software it is not just uh, essentially to do with arts music architecture so uh, that's these are three broad um, how do i say aspects of uh, language i think what we are going to do is we are going to explore this uh, you know using using some of uh, the examples from uh, history so uh, if, if i take uh, you know mm, uh, uh, example uh, or if i if i try to explore this aspect of language through uh, the classical greek architecture you know i think many people have written about it uh, you know vitruvius starts with his books of architecture uh, to um uh, no uh, to as recent as someone like uh, doxadius g or vincent scully uh, in 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 his book the earth uh, uh, the man and the gods um i think they have also looked at this notion of um uh, classical uh, architecture so if you if, if you take uh, if you and again if you try to see greek architecture the idea of classical language is explored in in um, in in the typology of temples uh, so this is one of very beautiful temple at pastium in italy there are actually two of them uh, is temple of hera and temple of apollo now if you try to look at the syntax of a greek temple you no know? so you have um, you no know, uh, if you if if you, you know there are very specific parts you do have a uh, style of bait which is the base you do have uh, the the columns itself the column uh, is composed of uh, a, a, a shaft with fluting and then you have got uh, the capital uh, uh, capitals have got again three different kind of parts which is to do with uh, you know abacus uh, achinus which kind of takes the load of uh, architrave which kind of takes again uh, takes uh, the, the 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 supports the roof structure so on and so forth and again if you try to look at this aspect of syntax over here 
you do find the origin in the ancient greek tectonics and some of the uh, some of, some of the theoreticians have really um, uh, looked at this idea of syntax in architecture through the tectonics and constructional order that means uh, uh, their argument is that what you see right now is uh, the evolution of what went into the construction of uh, a structure and therefore um, if you try to see greek uh, temples you do see uh, um, uh, the origin of uh, that greek tectonics uh, from the ancient structures you know? uh, some people cannot take this uh, to uh, you know um, the, the 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 primitive uh, megalithic structures uh, like uh, like stone heads they say that this is essentially architecture is about a uh, column and a wall and a roof you no know? very interesting book no it is is a very interesting story architecture is essentially a story of uh, you know four walls and a roof um, and uh, you no know, so they say that it is just the column and the lintel uh, you no know, which is which are the key aspects of architecture which are the key elements of architecture and throughout uh, th you know, throughout the history uh, till now we have been just uh, you know uh, dealing with this uh, story of uh, column and lintels or four walls and a roof um uh, so i think this is something which is which is very interesting when we look at um uh, language and uh, its origin in terms of syntax i'm going to talk about it in uh, further detail and therefore if you try to see uh, uh, classical orders no this is this is almost like a menu of uh, of, uh, of of elements uh, and components and uh, their combinations no um uh, uh, it is no if 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 you try to look at uh, greek classical order it is essentially uh, the combination of profile and proportion no uh, i'm going to come back to this so there are three kind of order as i think most of you would know no doric ionic and corinthian no and uh, the various combination and proportion of it uh, uh, would 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 give you this uh, um, no this this grammar uh sort of 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 uh, classical uh, architecture now um uh, again you no know, uh, is 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 something which is very clear you know what is the role of this column over here you know again uh, if you look at greeks uh, you know uh, um, the elements are are almost seen in a very anthropomorphic way uh, where so the the role of column is to bear the weight of the roof you know and if you look at column uh, if some of you are part of my history class they would have kind of known that nilosha and the gang you know? um so uh, if if you try to you know greeks almost saw the columns as 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 uh, uh, as uh, human beings uh, bearing the weight of 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 roof or uh, of cosmos um and and that's where we come to this idea of semantics you know? uh and if you try to see Uh, the quality uh, so uh, the profile and the proportion would tell us the characteristics of that person or um, of that column bearing the the roof uh, and uh, therefore uh, it's it's very interesting how uh, a certain kind of column uh, the shaft of column when it bulges uh, no um, you know, proportionally when it kind of curves is almost seen as flexing of muscles no with this fluting whereas in some cases when it is you no know, when it it is just kind of uh, standing straight you no know, is seen as um, you no know, uh, taking the load but in a very effortless way so it is almost um, uh, playing out an anthropomorphic version of um, of of or like giving a, a human like quality to the elements now if you try to see three orders again um, you no know, greek sort doric uh related to masculine you know related to essentially the strength in in some ways ionic again uh you know if if you try to uh, you know uh, to do with this idea of feminine uh, the grace corinthian to do with exuberance beauty you know if you try to see doric columns uh, essentially would be uh, uh, you know would would just stand uh, uh, you know without any base you know they would just rise from um you know from the plinth uh, and they would be uh, stouty in some ways uh, with with very you know, simple 
um, uh, capital. Whereas in case of um, uh, ionic, uh, uh, no, you do find uh, no, the column with, with an articulate base and an articulate capital. And the capital would have some sort of echinus, uh, which, which, which would seem like uh, the curls of hair, no? so on and so forth. So I think this is, this is very interesting where a certain kind of um, uh, features uh, of, of, of form are, are uh, linked with certain meanings. No? In case of Greek uh, architecture, Greek classical architecture, it is to do with this idea of um, uh, anthropomorphic uh, relationships. No? Again, Greeks, uh, no, I can talk about language, uh, um, uh, the landscape uh, in, in a very similar way when it comes to uh, Greek architecture. So, for example, now there are two, two things. No? So, uh, these, are, these are two very beautiful temples uh, on Acropolis. One is everyone would know uh, on, on your left hand side, you have got um, uh, Parthenon, and uh, on, on uh, your right hand side, you have got a, temp a small temple of Athena Nike. Now, over here, Athena is the goddess, uh, the patron goddess of uh, Athens, in, uh, and these are the temples which are uh, the Acropolis is essentially dedicated to her. And you've got this beautiful temple of uh, Parthenon, where Athena is seen as Athena Parthenos, no? as uh, a, a sort of uh, you know, uh, maiden uh, warrior. Uh, and therefore, if you try to see the columns over here, uh, they are um, uh, they are they are Doric, uh, no, um, in in some ways the the, the, the language is of a Doric uh, order, and 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 the columns have got a very very interesting uh, profile, uh, which is uh, and proportion which are almost uh, rising up to the sky effortlessly. No? where Athena is actually seen as as this um, uh, warrior god. Uh, Whereas in, in the other temple, which is Athena Nike, Athena is seen as, as a maiden. Uh, and therefore you see a very different kind of expression over here in terms of column. It's an ionic, uh, uh, no, the temple uses the ionic column and ionic order. Uh, and over here, uh, uh, the temple celebrates this, uh, uh, this, this aspect of Athena, which is to do with uh, a feminine grace. Uh, it's to do with this very agile, um, uh, uh, agile uh, uh, athlete. Uh, so again, um, if you if you try to see the the the, the notion of what you call masculine uh, or feminine, it is not to do with gender, but it is to do with a certain kind of quality. Uh, so you see Athena, uh, no uh, temples um, uh, and their orders uh, representing um, Athena in two of its forms. This comes out, you no, know, this particular nuanced way of uh, using the language uh, comes out beautifully in this uh, temple uh, at Baze. It's a temple of Apollo uh, Epicurus, the Apollo the helper in some ways. So if you try to see temple from outside, you have got this series of columns which are Doric in nature. You know? Apollo, Apollo being uh, the god of light, uh, music, uh, intelligence, uh, you know? Uh, human, uh, no, the best of human abilities. And, but if you go inside, no, uh, in, if you try to see this plan, and if you actually go inside, you do see on, on both the sides, you have got um, uh, beautiful, uh, straight, um, uh, ionic column. And in the center, you have got a Corinthian uh, column. So again, you see a very interesting play over here of, of uh, a certain kind of quality of Apollo, who is the helper in some ways, no? who is the god, who is a warrior god, who is the god of um, intelligence, human intervention. But at the same time, no, uh, from inside, no, from outside, he might uh, have, a, he might show a certain kind of strength, uh, no, as a protector. Uh, but from inside. Um, he has a certain kind of grace. He has uh, a softer uh, part in it. No? So uh, somehow, if you try to see Greek classical orders, um, um, they, they, they are not, um, no, it, from, from the face and from, from the first glance, 
they might uh, seem to you know uh, be very simply uh, sticks or rather simplified um, representation of um, you know the the qualities of uh, the gods but uh, still if you if you go into details uh, there is a very very nuanced approach which you can see um, uh, in in this so these are uh, again uh, two examples which we see over here in in terms of how the morphology or or the form uh, in terms of for when you talk about classical greek order um, uh, through just profile you know, that means ionic doric and proportion mean something you no know? again in the same way just looking at plants and proportion of plants uh, uh, number of uh, columns uh, on either side odd even you know? and so on and so forth so again uh, no how syntax and semantics are connected now when we talk about language with you no know, anything uh, has to uh, no has to continue uh, continue over some sort of time and space to really uh, you no know, be shared you no know? when we say uh, you no know, anything does not become a language instantaneously you know? for example uh, emojis you no know? uh, no for how long emojis are here you no know? if we if we if we talk about you no know? at least uh, you no know, in in this fast paced world at least uh, uh, for five years or more than that you no know? perhaps uh, when when i was uh, at school uh, uh, probably uh, or sometimes i still use it you no know? uh, where you use the bracket uh, as a smile and uh, those columns uh, as uh, eyes uh, and again there is there is shared understanding you no know, uh, of of this continuity so this continuity of a language over space and time is very very important um and uh, one of the most um, again um, beautiful thing about language is that languages grow uh, languages uh, change over a period of time you know uh, the new words are added uh, uh, the the some words are discarded uh, you know they are they are uh, uh, done away with no the purists would say that no the language has been no uh, there is a degeneration of language uh, uh, some uh, futurists would say no that's the uh, no that's uh, that's how it should be no so uh, the continuity of language over space and time is very very important and i think this is something which we again see in case of classical architecture no so this continuity of classical architecture no uh quickly if we try to see you know it's it's you no know, from greek it kind of comes to romans and romans use it in very different way of course uh what what it means you no know, what a doric column means does not remain same when 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 it comes to roman or to some extent the same you know? and again as you see in 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 mason uh, mason carre uh, that's the temple at nimes in uh, france Uh, again is a roman uh, temple um, from um, you know 4th uh, to 7th uh, century uh, no 4th to 7 ad that's a first century ad um, uh, you do see that the again uh, you are using uh, same vocabulary you are using the ionic uh, order but uh, uh, maybe a different sort of composition in plan so you know you might see that the porch uh, unlike greek porch which is essentially the set of columns which which uh, are surrounding uh, the cella or the wall over here you see a very frontal porch and you see the columns being merged with wall to become pilasters no and again that is something which 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 uh, becomes very interesting way of looking at expression part of it as well go to renaissance and work of palladio uh, in in 16th century uh, you do see uh, again the use of similar kind of vocabulary uh, but uh no and carrying on some of those principles but perhaps the ionic order over here the columns don't mean uh the the grace or the feminine grace maybe to some extent yes but uh, uh not in case of palladio no over here he is uh, he is seeing as maybe strength maybe some sort of symmetry so there are certain principles which will continue uh, some of the meanings uh, uh, related to this vocabulary would be discarded and i think this is something which we see in languages themselves as well if you come to uh, the 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 first part of 19th century in in uh, germany you do see this 
uh, in in a different way you no know, in in the neoclassical way uh, where you see this glapothek uh, munich and if you try to see uh, in even in 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 uh, early part of uh, 20th century you do see the same um uh, with with the uh, works of uh, um, uh, um uh, spencer uh, for you know what what he did for his uh, what he proposed for uh, uh, the nazi germany so uh, but on 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 other side uh, sorry for this this is essentially uh, this is one of this uh, rotunda at uh, uh, university of uh, virginia uh, designed by thomas jefferson again the person using the same kind of uh, vocabulary over here no uh, for for uh, no you might see you know, but um, uh, jefferson uh, uses it in a very different way no for him uh, the form uh, and uh, the, the 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 morphology uh, column forms uh, do represent something which is uh, a timeless institution no and therefore he is looking at this idea of timelessness over here similarly if you try to see any of no if you if you look at uh, uh, no some of the key institutions no if you look at capitol hill or if you look at uh, 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 no asiatic library in mumbai again you might see a similar kind of vocabulary which is used uh, and which would mean something else no it would mean something which is to do with grand which is to do with something permanent no idea of representing institutions themselves you know? so this idea of continuity uh, in a language is very very interesting you know you might use the same kind of vocabulary but over the time the meanings change uh, and i think that that is something which is very very interesting but still very in intriguing part of of uh, language uh, and over here i again mean um, i can see that in architectural language that would you know if you look at music you no know, you are using certain kind of uh, uh, no you you might use certain kind of composition no it might mean something in in the classical way but if you are going to use it as a part of fusion it might be something else no it would create uh, it, it would express itself in a different manner so uh, i think this this becomes very very important the other part is no uh, which is very very in, uh, very um, uh, this uh, very important to look at is the Uh, language and design intention now um, again we saw uh, in case of classical architecture no there is a sort of design intention over there as well uh, no uh, greek the temple architects we don't know the unknown temple architects would would uh, uh, no in in collaboration with priest uh, on whosoever is on the board no they would have uh, thought about uh, no no what what is the design intention over there so no now this has been something which 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 uh, has been interest you uh, know um, something as a student i was interested and um, what is this relationship between morphology and form morphology uh, that is a form and design intention um, and this was something which is which was near and dear to me and that is something which which we move around in uh, say in in place like ahmedabad if you move around you no know, you see this um uh, beautiful uh, traditional architecture uh, especially the architecture from sultanate era uh, gujarat sultanate uh, era um, where it uses a certain kind of very um, uh, simple vocabulary but then they come up with this uh, astounding uh, variations uh, and different buildings no and i think this was something which 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 uh, took um, my 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 fans see and that was something which i i pursued it further in my uh, design in in my research thesis i think most of you know uh, some of the students would know it uh, you know this was um, no so in 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 my research thesis i looked at this idea of uh, you know uh, looking at idea of architectural language uh, looking at elements and its grammar in fatehpur sikri you know which again borrows lot of uh vocabulary a lot of these rules of combinations a uh, lot of uh, grammar uh, more uh, from from gujarat sultanate era or i would say um, in in the the, the maru gujar uh, school uh, of of architecture what do you find in rajasthan and gujarat southern rajasthan and uh, gujarat so again uh, this was uh, a wonderful journey for me uh, and again the whole idea was to look at uh no uh, from 
as a designer, not as an historian, not as someone who, uh, uh, but as a designer, as an architect, no? how would I see uh, the, the, the form of Fatehpur Sikri? How would I see uh, the elements of Fatehpur Sikri? How would I see the composition uh, of Fatehpur Sikri? Um, of course, uh, like like any research, no, uh, um, you have to kind of uh, uh, narrow your scope uh, uh, and limit yourself to some aspect of uh, um, of your study so that you can do some sort of justice to it. And I think that is something which, you know, um, uh, from 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 the morphological point of view, probably Fatehpur plan looks like this. But from the intentional point of view. Maybe this is how Fatehpur Sikri might look. No, this might look like the scribble which you kind of do all the time uh, for, uh, to kind of uh, try out uh, various design alternatives. So again, uh, in in case of uh, Fatehpur Sikri, you do see this very you know playing out very clearly. You no, know? you do see a system, um, you no, know, which consists of uh, an element, an element which consists of a component. So you do see a column system which is a columnar system which has got a column and then which has got a couple of components no bracket shaft capital so on and so forth so in Fatehpur Sikri you have systems of uh, you have columnar system you've got uh, systems of walls and you've got combinational system no uh, wall plus walls and columns together columns around the walls walls around the column and then you have the grammar that is the idea of combinations you know and so this was something which was very interesting to me that how do design intentions play out uh, with the vocabulary and grammar in place? For example, if you try to see, look at a, look at a columnar system no? uh, as an element, you do see uh, no, a a column in a, in a very abstract way. No? It's something which you know, if square column would mean something, no? uh, would, would, would express a certain kind of spatial quality, whereas a circular column would do something else to it. No? Uh, no, no, uh, no, in terms of directionality, in terms of uh, proportion, uh, so on and so forth. So in Fatehpur Sikri, you do see column, uh, no, as, as, uh, which, is, which can be broken down or rather uh, exploded into various sort of components. No? So you've got a base, which would be more or less a common base. You see variation in shaft. No? You see uh, rectilinear uh, uh, column shafts with uh, either square, or rectangular um, uh, profiles, you have circular columns, you have got octagonal columns. Again, you see variation in terms of the capital. Capital again has got support in terms of the brackets, uh, again, uh, bearing uh, the load of uh, roof uh, and, and the frame, the beam frames. Uh, so again, this is something which is very, very elaborate in Fatehpur Sikri. Again, this idea of columnar system, you no know, two columns defining a plane, four columns, you no know, uh, kind of implying a sort of enclosure with roof. It becomes very, very evident, and then repetition in various ways. Again, system of wall uh, similar to that in Fatehpur basically you do find masonry wall, uh, which has one kind of way. We have got frame and infill. That's another kind, and then combinations. You, know, you do see column and wall wall around the column uh, no, and the variation within that. Um, no, uh, um, no. And then you have this grammar. No? What happens when, when you combine them together, when you modify something? No? That means no, if you have one column, if you, uh, no, in, in Fatih Prasukri, when they are added together, no, just with number of units, it might imply a directionality. It might imply uh, an edge condition. It might imply a corner condition. Similar with the bracket, it might does the same thing. Change in shaft also might mean something. You no know? change in the levels, change in the edge condition, uh, change in base would mean something similar. Uh, frames uh, and the articulation frame of for that would also mean so variation uh, and combination would give you a sort of grammar over here. Uh, and this is something which you can see in most of the buildings of Fatehpur Sikri. This is not something which, 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 uh, which um, uh, was something which I thought about it, but it was something which was observed based on indexing of uh, every element and every building on Fateh, uh, at Fatehpur Sikri. So 
again to take example no again this is one of my favorite examples uh, no if if we want to kind of test out this hypothesis of language and grammar with that of intention design intention how would you do that so suppose if i think myself of uh, no uh, think of myself as as a designer of this beautiful building called diwane khas in fatehpur sikri no how would i use this grammar uh, how do i use this vocabulary uh, uh, to to play out my intentions so if you try to see diwane khas is a beautiful building it is somewhere over here uh, where my cursor is um, no with a, with a deep shadow Uh, it's a solid building from outside uh, you know uh, almost like an object in space uh, you know there there are uh, very few buildings in fatehpur sikri which are like object in space this is one of them so this is there maryam sultana's uh, pavilion is one of them and then you got birbal's house which does the same thing so if you try to see the plan it's 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 a, it's a very classical geometrical plan so it's a square in, in proportion you no know? um you no know? with 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 the, with with one kind of space which is over there uh, in the in the center you do see this column which supports a sort of throne on top of it uh, they say that uh, akbar used to give a you no know, audience to uh, very very important people you no know, khas people uh, uh, so um, so that was something which which um, um no which 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 uh, no maybe becomes the intention no looking at this idea of a building which supports the throne no um uh, for 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 people and then what happens on outside so you do see the section over here again proportionally if you kind of draw um no uh, if 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 you draw uh, the 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 um, no it is pretty much no proportionally it would be same as what you see in plan in terms of dimension and proportion so again there is a certain kind of geometrical rigor to this building as well from outside it is a very unassuming uh, facade uh, uh, and the use of elements so again you know uh, if if we if if we assume uh, that uh, the idea of 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 uh, Uh, the single column with the throne or acre stamba in some ways if that is uh, if this building is made to house this particular kind of column uh, throne for uh, the 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 uh, for for akbar can this become the generator and that was something which was very you know so you no know, if you design a building for a column how would it be you no know? so if you look at the column itself it's a beautiful column you no know? it starts with a base which is which is a square which kind of goes and transform Uh, into uh, an octagonal shaft to a shaft with the uh, 16 facets by the time it comes to the top it becomes a circular shaft um, and then uh, which supports the bracket uh, and the throne above and if you try to see in terms of a column implying a sort of directionality you do see that you no know, the the, the uh, you no know, there is there is this uh, gradual transformation from square to circle you no know? looking at square which kind of tells you that you are pretty much you no know, it's all square is almost like a coordinate the cross hair coordinate to the circle uh, which which um, imply multiple directionality you no know? so again looking at this idea of uh, you no know, uh, moving from a cardinal direction of the real space to looking at um, you no know, almost uh, you no know, infinite expanse of of uh, so called you know, abstract space you no know? looking at uh, the the king who is a ru- ru- uh, you no know, Who, who the emperor uh, who rules uh, a place a specific place you no know, uh, and transcending uh, to to a very different sort of um, you know uh, no uh, notion of 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 uh, a chakravarti or a ruler who uh, you no know, who is who is uh, the ruler of the, uh, the 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 earth um this particular thing is again reflected in the spatial structure you do see this spatial structure where the column uh, with the throne uh, you know occupies one square you know which kind of transforms you no know, uh, the spatial structure uh, you know you got around nine square uh, which uh, this becomes a module both in plan as well as section you no know? but when you look from outside uh, you know uh, what happens is uh, you know you, the facade has uh, you know uh, two particular very distinct levels you know on ground you have got that sort of level which you do see over here uh, where uh, there are very clear 
columns, no, where you see the articulation of uh, columns uh, uh, supporting the beams, uh, no, so um, uh, through um, transition of bracket. So it's very real in that sense. No, over here you can see what are the elements uh, which how is the load transfer? It is it, it kind of um, uh, how do I say um, it? It kind of um, uh, communicates this idea of a real world situation. You know? Whereas if you try to see the top portion, it's, it's a very thin uh, abstract frame uh, which is there, uh, you know? um, where uh, the, 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 the column and the lintel uh, is not really emphasized or the, first of all separated out or emphasized. And I think this kind of talks about this, uh, you know, this difference of, of uh, the, the real, um, you know, where you can actually sense the load, where you can actually see the load uh, being transferred versus that of uh, very abstract, you know, as if uh, the load is not being carried. Uh, you know. So yeah, again, uh, uh, what, what starts with this uh, very strange sort of uh, uh, structure uh, you know, inside, you know, uh, from this transition from very real to abstract is somehow reflected in the spatial structure as well as uh, what you see from outside the the, the elevation or or uh, the overall um, uh, the, the the external form of the building. So in that sense, you know, if you think about the X number as as a generator or the column as a generator of a building, it is something which kind of carries on. This idea is carried on. From, uh, from from the plan level uh, or organizational level to the idea of detail. So, uh, one minute, yeah. So again, a similar kind of example uh, for Birbal's house. No? Again, in Birbal's house, uh, you do see a similar kind of uh, situation no? um, no? um, with, with uh, a sort of uh, organization which is, um, no, uh, symmetrical in in that sense, but not so symmetrical. No? And what happens uh, because of this addition of uh, uh, two of those uh, uh, chambers, empty chambers, uh, in, on the ground floor, and it kind of gives a very different sort of um, formal uh, you know, dynamism to that structure. You know? Almost buildings become uh, a play of uh, ships. No? So you can see that uh, shift in plan countered by the shift in uh, elevation. Uh, so uh, again, uh, through this, uh, no, this, this, this exploration of relationship between, uh, no, uh, the, the, the form, uh, uh, morphology, uh, elements, and their grammar, and how do, uh, no, what do they mean, uh, no, uh, in terms of when, uh, no, in terms of uh, design intention. That was something which was explored uh, in Fateh Pusik. This was one of the very important uh, um, no, uh, phase of, of, of uh, um, no, uh, my, 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 uh, uh, no, my, my involvement with this idea of language and architecture. And this is something which, which no, a single column, how does it uh, resonate with, with almost uh, the whole of the city? No? This kind of rupture of scale was very uh, interesting for me. Again, when we look at language, no, uh, this question comes: no, that uh, language uh, does it belong to whom? No, who, who, whom does this language belongs? No, does it belong to an individual? Does it belong to a collective? And I think this is also one of this conundrum, which is uh, very very interesting, especially uh, when you kind of uh, uh, move on uh, to the modern, uh, uh, no, uh, modern architecture, no. Where uh, again, um, no, so if, if you see in previous examples, in, in case of Palladio, no, again, there, is, there are very distinct design moves, but vocabulary is pretty much uh, no, uh, connecting back uh, to, to the classical order. No? Uh, it might mean something else, but yes, uh, the vocabulary was pretty much similar. No? Now, no, no, with, with, with this idea of uh, no modern profession, no profession of an architect, architect as an individual, architect as an agent. No, this question of who owns, no, whose language is it? No, no who owns this language? Who takes, uh, uh, how do I say, uh, charge of this language? I think this this becomes a very very important question. No, 
question of individual versus collective and this is something which which uh, which has been uh, going on uh, in my mind and um, uh, for for as even as an architect you know when i when i am designing you know i'm you no know, it it comes to my mind you know that yes uh, who does this column belong you no know? uh, that sachin soni has a right over this column you no know, copyright uh, with c you know uh, Uh, and this used to be an uh, you know uh, couple of buildings i have not designed many buildings with couple of buildings uh, you know a lot of my my colleagues would say oh uh, this this building oh this this looks like uh, you know this this looks like mees uh, or uh, this looks like uh, uh, you know you you are looking at uh, uh, work of charles moore a lot you know uh, so and i think this this something which kind of uh, you know makes you think you know that when you are using a certain kind of vocabulary you know who takes charge of this vocabulary you know uh, so when we talk about language again you know uh, is it individual or is it collective or both you know uh, you know who coins these words you know sometimes you know in in literal languages someone would coin some word you know uh, shashi tharur is known for that you know coining uh, very complex words so uh, and and if if you no know, it becomes uh, a shared vocabulary it become part of the lexicon and and yes then it becomes collective and i think that is something which which um, is also a very uh, interesting factor when we talk about language and that is something which kind of drew me in looking at the works of uh, contemporary architects i when i say contemporary architects i mean um, of course not not someone who who is you no know, but from 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 the modern period onwards no i think that is something which i started exploring and where most of you are part of this journey you know uh, in 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 my studios which are which uh, are called the the master stroke you know uh, looking at uh, the the matters of architectural language again over here you know uh, that's where this exploration regarding uh, how much uh, does an individual own a language uh, or an architectural vocabulary you know what is the control which Uh, an individual architect has smith uh, has uh, no uh, history uh, course by smith is very interesting where again he is looking at uh, individual architects as agents you know they are they are the agents of transformation they are agents of change you know uh, where uh, no uh, but again not divorced from the context again this was another uh, part of the studio you know? so again looking at Uh, the 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 language but from you no know, vocabulary and the language but from from again a very physical and from a very very morphological perspective you know, so some of these exercises sorry uh, you no know, look it looks at you know, what are the kind of what is the morphology of this building you know when you look at a wangshu building you know, why do you always feel that yes you no know, this is this is something different and this is wangshu or or when you kind of look at mario botta uh, you know why is it so distinctive you know uh, of course you might find hints of uh, khan here and there you know but still you know why is it uh, you know you know what makes mario botta building a mario botta building you know or uh, a, a a plan of aldo venaik uh, you know uh, you know why does he you know why does he has this combination of semicircles and circles and no why certain kind of geometry and grid and i think this is something which which um, you know, becomes very very uh, you know uh, interesting uh, query or question again uh, you no know, there is a different sort of uh, you know like what we saw earlier uh, you know uh, where where looking at a very distinct way of looking at semantics uh, and syntax you no know, looking at this uh, idea of vocabulary and grammar and what do they mean um i i the 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 um, uh, uh, exploration uh, with the work of an individual architect um uh, one of the things which 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 i tried out was if suppose if we if we don't really separate them out and if we say that you know this is something which we normally use this words uh, uh, this this troops which are used by us uh, no so no structure material surface no we don't really go into this uh, we don't separate them as as uh, as as form and what do they mean but if we just kind of look at 
some of these keywords and try to see if it you know if it kind of uh, if if we are able to uh, identify some sort of common uh, language uh, through this so again uh, the categorization uh, for this studio uh, or for an individual work was done through the you no know, through very very uh, you no know, the usual words which which we use as architects you no know? so again you no know, if you if you if uh, sorry yeah so if you if you look at uh, you no know, so uh, works of lina mobadi you no know, you no know, how would she look at this idea of mass you no know? what is her way of looking at material uh without actually going into this notion of a column or a beam you know um, how would she look at a surface you know for probably for her uh, the surface is related to textures the surface is uh, related to uh, colors uh, you know uh, surface means that it becomes a, a device for uh, you know uh, reflecting uh, the surroundings you know through transparent or opaque material or through uh, you know using materials which are from the context itself uh, you know um, so uh, i think i think this this you no know, sorry again you no know, look at if you look at uh, mees you know for you know what does this idea of space means to means wonder or what does what do you see in his uh, design so these are the works of various uh, you know uh, uh, students who are looking at the uh, you know uh, looking at this architect and trying to distill somehow some of these three principles of uh, you know um, of of from the series of their work uh, you know not one particular building um, and seeing if there is a common language to their work you know? so what about movement no how does means looks at a movement no? or say no for mario botta no this idea of geometry primary uh, shapes uh, looking at the principles of symmetry and axiality breaking it down looking at uh, no idea of uh, grid no so uh, this uh, no over here uh, no manali uh, the student has kind of looked at that you know for if you want to look at mario botta's work the primary lens is geometry order as an order also the axiality grid and then looking at order as aggregator no as something which which aggregates repeats and aggregates no? and again this whole thing of if you have identified a principle if you have identified a sort of language uh, no uh, maybe uh, no how can can you transcend the scale can you rupture the scale and therefore this exercise is of looking at maybe a game you no know? so what if uh, mees wonderro has to design a game you no know? or what if aldo van eyck has to design a object you no know? uh, and uh, do these principles play out over here to what extent do they play out uh, uh, does uh, the 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 use of a certain kind of vocabulary uh, at at uh, a smaller scale changes meaning i think these are very very interesting questions when it comes to uh, you know the use of language and again you no know, uh, so this is uh, uh, you know what if uh, uh, you know our friend uh, um, renzo piano has to uh, has to has to uh, you know design an installation you know which reflects his work you know now it is you know if architects don't build you know they become part of uh, the exhibit no they become part of biennale and no? uh, so how do they no uh, no if 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 uh, uh, someone like uh, um, uh, joseph joseph elenstein no if he has to represent himself as a part of this exhibition no how would he design this this particular object no and again over here no looking at uh, of course the physical form you know, the morphology uh, in terms of grid in terms of uh, clear lines in terms of expressing uh, what the actual material the way they are but again this purpose of looking at light uh, shadows um, and relationship with nature and i think this this is uh, can, can you really distill that can you dist really distill uh, this and i think this was this is a wonderful exploration you know now again the second part is what if 
no as 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 we found out no no, no uh, that most of most of the design intentions no most of first of all most of the vocabulary um, no how contextual it is no how much does it belong to a place no that means uh, that particular space and time no how 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 much uh, what what is the relevance of this language does this language change with the geography does it change with the time even if it change is it relevant the relevance of you no know, if i am using uh, uh, the 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 shakespeare the, the english used by shakespeare uh, no um, no uh, in the present day no uh, what no does it make some sense or how is it relevant no i think this is or if i i start using um, no uh, should the you no know, uh, gujarati uh, no or 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 bureaucratic hindi no in a everyday affair uh, no uh, how, does it uh, no uh, is it is it relevant this is this is very interesting no it also happens in real time you know uh, a, a very dear friend of ours uh, who um, whose uh, uh, introduction to uh, hindi was only in the school you no know? and she used a very classical uh, textbook hindi and once uh, she you know when she came to andabad and she had to converse with a auto driver uh, she was using a classical hindi you no know? uh, so and 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 that kind of creates this very interesting situation you no know? a certain kind of dissonance and i think this is the where the idea of what fits into that particular space and time i think this is you no know, and the relevance of language over here and this is something which uh, again was tried out uh, no or is being tried out uh, when mm, no when 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 a certain group of architects no uh, are, are placed in a different space and time no and therefore if lena, if lena bobardi no has to come to uh, jaisalmer no from brazil no what will she do no how would she react uh, to to jaisalmer no what part of vocabulary would remain constant what is going to change what is going to morph you no know? what are the principles which don't change what are the principles which modify with the place and the time and i think this is something which 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 was very fascinating to kind of see in the works of students uh, you know where over here aditi kind of interpreted um, lina bobadi in a very very different way you know the idea of uh, lifting the building uh, no uh, but to accommodate shade no to accommodate activity in the hot weather of jaisalmer no and almost seeing the parts of the building uh, going down no uh, with deep shadows uh, no and constant and um, no something which kind of comes to life uh, the plazas only and the top part of the buildings only come to life uh, in the evening no uh, and no what if you see mario botta uh, in jaisalmer no uh, looking at uh, no uh, the geometric objects uh, in 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 reference to the other kind of geometries no uh, looking at this idea of shade you know looking at this idea of form you know, and how does and what will he do, you know what what if he has to do something with the material you know the jaisalmer stone uh, you know what uh, how would he deal with shadows how would he deal with the hot climate uh, i think this is something which uh, you know becomes very very important over here and you no know, uh, we started with mees and probably we will end with mees uh, you no know, what if mees wanderu comes to jaisalmer you no know, uh, and you know, uh, will he become he will he you no know, the question comes you no know, will he make this thick buildings you no know, which is very uneasy you no know, uh, or will he go with his usual you uh, know uh, you know light planes you no know, Uh, almost like uh, again object in space uh, you know uh, guided with the forces uh, you know um, of of the context you know uh, so i'm going to end my uh, talk over here i'm going to end my journey over here um, uh, and i think i would like to open up for a discussion i would like to open up session for the discussion i went on very you know i i i hope i have not uh, uh no go on very fast uh no it's almost tea yes, it's almost an hour yeah so i think good time to stop so i'm going to stop over here and open up if you have got any kind of 
observation, uh, doubts, uh, questions, queries, I think it would be wonderful because it would let me think, you know, since uh, you know, language is always uh, open to modification, you know, change. You know. Thank you. Thank you, Sachin. That was a wonderful talk. Such beautiful drawings of Sikri. <laughs> but okay, so now we open it up to whoever wants to ask uh, questions or discuss. Yeah, and I, I, I think that uh, this, 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 uh, um, uh, um, uh, this, this talk is more of a provocation. It is, uh, yeah. I would say that it is still uh, uh, like any of our work is a work in progress. And I think that's where, um, no, if you if you have some sort of observation, uh, something which is not necessary uh, related to my talk, but related to the broader topic, uh, you are most uh, no, you can kind of bring it up to the table. I think that would be wonderful. I can already see uh, Jay, uh, who was part of the studio. Uh, I can see him over here. Yeah. May I start a discussion in that case? Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> you know, there's, there's many sort of thoughts about these kinds of things. Yeah. For example, it's quite recently, I don't re remember exactly which year, that it was discovered that the, um, the Parthenon was actually colored in lurid colors. Yeah, yes. bright red, bright blue, bright yellow. So there has been a misreading of this yes. over the centuries. Yes. So it was read in terms of proportion, in terms of structure, but it would have been completely different from what if we they had like. known from the beginning. Yes. So it was a language that was misunderstood yes. and which has led historically to different ways of uh, seeing that. What do you, what would you say about yeah I, I I think uh, you are absolutely right uh, there is always uh, uh, you no know, this happens with when you find the new scripts you no know, like Harappan script has not been uh, no I would say Indus yes, Valley or uh, is not been deciphered you no know? and we might read it in a very different way and uh, this is something which with the role of color has been something which was very fascinating again articulation and color especially Greek, uh, classical Greek architecture. Um, and um, oh, um, when, when, when uh, I, I used to take one of this, uh, uh, when I used to give a talk on for the, my history course, you no, know, from all these things, you no, know, my last slide was about what if Parthenon, you no, know, uh, you know, from what you kind of talked about, was colored, you no, know, was colored in terms of this beautiful red and blues. No, and and whites, uh, um, and I think this is something which which is also fascinating with with Indian. Uh, no, I can see uh, if you go to uh, Kailasha uh, in Alora, we always see Kailasha as dark. You no, know, this uh, dark gray, black, uh, monolithic structure. But if you try to see the corners of Kailasha, you no, know, you do see uh, uh, you no know, the remnants of uh, the plaster uh, and paints and the murals. Mm -hmm. I think this has been something which is fascinating, no? Where, uh, what if the surfaces change? Uh, and I would say that traditionally, uh, if you look at architecture, especially the Indian architecture, they have looked at surfaces and form in a very different way. And the forms are always uh, uh, are seen, uh, the surfaces are seen as a part of uh, form, unlike, unlike uh, uh, the, 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 the modern interpretation of geometry. And hmm. I, I would say the, the, inter, the, the idea of language won't be changed. It would become much more nuanced. It might modify itself, but it would become much more nuanced. And therefore, if you try to see the recent studies regarding the language, uh, the debates of language uh, in architecture uh, uh, are in terms of looking at uh, the labor, uh, the representation, it is to do with looking at uh, what, what went about in making of that form rather than uh, the, the, the physical expression of the form. So if you try to see the recent studies, the, the language uh, part has been now 
um, no, looked at not from a very formalistic morphological view, but from the view of movement and network of uh, labor, uh, uh, you know, money, uh, patronage, so on and so forth. No, mm -hmm. so the forces of societal society uh, in making of it. So that's a different dimension of language, and it has definitely made would make this discussion much more richer. So. Uh, like, like uh, there was a very recent uh, um, uh, study which was there uh, regarding some of uh, uh, the temples in Tamil Nadu. No, uh, no, the relationship between the paintings, the murals, patronage, and the form, no? where uh, the, the 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 form was just the background, whereas the the chain, no, what you see, uh, 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 no, uh, the murals kept on changing depending upon. Who the king was, who was the patron, no? and it again gives a very different sort of uh, opens up a very different sort of debate of of uh, you no know, how do you look at uh, uh, the, the 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 language in terms of morphology? You no, know? should you look at it as something which is timeless, something which keeps on changing, uh, something which is, becomes the background uh, uh, for the the for the uh, actual play of life, and I think these are very interesting. You know, it it throws up very interesting uh, again uh, questions uh, at 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 designers. You know? Yeah. Uh, hi, Sachin. Yes. Seema. Hi. Here. Hi, Seema. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting talk. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but I just wanted to ask, um, uh, you know, uh, one question from a linguistic point of view. Yes. And since you focused a lot on language. Yes. Um, so the thing is that language is made up of, I mean, essentially uh, of phonemes, right? Yes. Of sound. Yes. So uh, otherwise there is no language. So yes. the first level of, uh, of, uh, um, uh, um, morpheme coming together is because of phonemes. phonemes so uh, how much does sound play a role in architecture? It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, question. Um, uh, I, I would see it in two perspectives. And this is also something which uh, has been a very interesting debate amongst theoreticians, whether this analogy makes sense or not. No? So people who mm -hmm. are who are against this uh, way of looking at architecture, uh, you know, who says that uh, no no see you cannot really compare language uh, with architecture in that way. You know? But mm -hmm. you know, uh, when 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 the way I see it is that in 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 language as you say the 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 the, the basic material you no know, mm -hmm. is essentially um, uh, uh, is the sound you no. Know? Or phone right. beam, no? mm. the, the form is essentially through the sound. Whereas right. in architecture, the form is through the material itself. You no. Know? Now again, there are two viewpoints. Someone would say, no, no, no. The basic material is not the mass, but the space which you want to enclose. And mass is just mm -hmm. one of the ways in which you enclose. So one way of looking at it uh, is that for architecture, it is you no know, uh, the, the 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 notion of of uh, uh, mass. Or material which encloses the space, no? Right. No, I would I would see that that is equivalence to that of phoneme, no, or the sound okay. when it comes to language. But of course, there are different. No, this is uh, analogical comparison. No, this mm -hmm. is an analogy. It is not. So that's looking at. It. Second way of looking at it is um, no looking at the sound itself as one of the uh, uh, no, uh, one of the ways in which uh, no, um, uh, as one of the very key components of language right. of architecture. Right. And if you look at uh, works of uh, 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 of of uh, Zoom thought yeah? mm -hmm. and Palasma, uh, mm. written works of Palasma and the, the the architectural works of Zoom thought. Again, Zoom thought looks at sensorial. No, he looks at these senses. No, the touch, right. the, right. the sound, the smell. Mm. And, uh, and Zumtha says that uh, you know what uh, it is not. Uh, it is not the material itself, uh, no. But mate no material or uh, is sort of medium, no. 
but actually architecture is made out of uh, this this no it's also made up of sound the right? oral and the yeah yes so these are various view points which are there when we look at this analogy you know right <laughs> and different architects and different uh, uh, different uh, thinkers uh, you know throughout history have been having this various uh, no have been having this kind of debates no how do we look right. at this you know especially again as as i told in the beginning of uh, presentation no that languages do have a very specific objective the objective of the language is to communicate mm -hmm. now and i think you are a simulation and you study the meanings uh, <laughs> and i think and so then uh, no one is that do objects uh, story for people who don't see like i don't see architecture uh, buildings as object but if i say uh, no um, do objects have meaning you know apart hmm. from the use you know or use itself is a meaning so that is also a very interesting debate you know? right and and i think if you <laughs> and i think both of our favorite eco umberto uh, kind yeah. of goes into this uh, you know in in a much more detail so right. uh, this also opens up a very different sort of conundrum you know right the the the, the, the question of meaning uh, mm -hmm. and, and objects do they really have meaning apart from the use you know hmm. or use itself is a meaning or use is just uh, how do i say uh, momentary uh, mm -hmm. or an instance uh, of production and then right. objects have different sort of life i was just discussing with someone um, uh, seema this was very interesting um, with with my studio actually uh, okay. some of my students there is a very interesting book called secret lives of building by ed hoyce yes. no okay i think you know okay. ed uh, uh, yeah, he's yeah. a dear friend so uh, based in uh, um, uh, university of edinburgh so mm -hmm. ed kind of looks at the life of buildings uh, mm -hmm. he looks at parthenon and he says that parthenon you no know, started as a temple and you no know, but then over a period of time it kind of changed these uses you know no roman mm -hmm. period it became something else when turkish took over it some it became something else when uh, no uh, uh, during world war it became something else similarly he looked at uh, uh, he looks at uh, notre dame uh, similarly he looks at uh, no uh, various other buildings no how the buildings themselves have got life of its own and so in that sense architecture is just a shell uh, no and uh, um, no as as an object uh, uh, the primary function uh, becomes the instigator for its production but right. uh, no if it can withstand the the, the time uh, mm. then uh, it would acquire a different sort of meaning no and this is something which you see uh, no with 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 uh, something um, with with jewelry with with clothes uh, with yeah. with uh, yeah. With the, with the hair do no so mm -hmm. uh, uh, right now in india if you kind of move out no everyone has got this weird kind of hair do which is no you have that uh, no uh, it is uh, it is called uh, f uh, asterisk asterisk k uh, boy uh, hair do uh, mm. uh, and no uh, you no know, it might start it might start uh, in us uh, no with with a very different sort of uh, <laughs> intention but once uh -huh. it comes to india it is something else no or if you kind of uh, look at uh, no uh, the, the 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 fashion world no if you uh -huh. try to see the way hipsters uh, no uh, no this this whole thing of uh, no side pencil uh, um, trousers uh, no which 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 is actually very hipsterish in some ways no if you go to uk or us you do find no hipsters kind of wearing it with a certain kind of uh, purpose in mind once it comes to india no there is nothing hipster is about it you know? so mm. uh, like with, with with so it it acquires in that sense the form or these features uh, they you no know, once they change the context uh, in some ways they might acquire a very different sort of meaning so i'm also uh, you no know, and i'm also kind of interested in that uh, from architectural perspective you know? yeah so material i'm i'm i my perspective comes from the material point of view yes um as to uh, the sound comes from the material like you rightly yes. said you know so you know whether it is umta or whether it is palasma or whether it is isenman uh, or the temple architecture 
uh, you know, where you actually go to these places because you also experience the sound. You know, when you yes. go to Mahabalipuram, you know, it is that sound, uh, you know, in collaboration with the choice of material, uh, the use of, uh, you know, particular kind of, uh, uh, you know, rocks that are used to construct these things, yes. Um, yes. which I feel, uh, you know, I don't know, I may be completely wrong, but I feel needs a lot more research inputs in the architectural field because uh, there is a lot of visual, uh, there's a lot of tactile, but I don't think there's much of oral interpretation of yes. language of architecture. I think this is this you is know? a very, very interesting point. This is a very interesting point. And I think perhaps uh, someone like Palasma, uh, no, uh, no, when he talks about tactile, he is actually talking about the overall sensorial uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, aspect of architecture. And, and that, is, that is something which he sees that it is missing, not necessarily or not only in terms of the architectural discourse, but also in terms of yeah. the architectural uh, uh, production, no? Absolutely. Because yeah. the discourse and the production kind of go hand in hand, no? If, yeah. if, yeah. I, if I talk about uh, the visual centric architecture, uh, no? Uh, that's what is, is, going, no? uh, is going to be produced and whatever is going to be produced, I'm going to talk about it. So it becomes a sort of vicious cycle in some ways. And therefore, there has to be some sort of breakthrough. There has to be some sort of you know, change over there. Yeah. So I found that very strong in Alto's architecture as well. Yes. You know, so the, the oral quality of the structures, that famous church in Imatra, you know, so when you sit there, you actually feel the sound. Yeah. You know, you feel the sound. You don't, you don't just feel, you feel the sound through the material. So, yes. you know, my, my interest comes from how much materiality and oral uh, experience conjoin together. And that is what contributes to the visual quality. Yes. So I would like to go through the other direction rather than through the visual direction. Visual direction, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But thank yeah, you so no, much. It's, it's, no, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting uh, you know, way of looking at. And I think Alto, you know, for that, uh, I think we need to go to Scandinavia and really see, observe the silence. You know? Yeah. If, if, if you no, know, when you are staying away from each other, where there is no, when, when even a leaf which falls on the ground will make a sound. Absolutely. And I yeah. think, uh, you know, so, and perhaps that is somehow that, that when I say that relation with, with uh, that space and time you know, is somehow reflected mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. as an instance in, in, in work of Alva Alto. You know? That's right. Yeah. Thank you so much. I don't want to take up all the question time, but uh, it was wonderful chatting with you. Uh, yeah. And thank you for the presentation. I mean, it felt so good to be back in uh, <laughs> your uh, classroom. <laughs> thank you, Sachin. Thanks. Thanks, Seema. I think there is some question by, uh, yeah. So, Varisha. Uh, is asking that how does one look at morphology or the building blocks of an architectural language of parametric architecture? Some architects deconstruction follow philosophy instead of language of elements. What is your take on philosophy as language? Now there are so many questions which are there, Varisha. But yeah, I will, I will, I will just <laughs> uh, what I will do is I will I will start with this uh, thing about uh, parametric architecture. I think this is a very interesting question. And you know, um, at, at after Christopher Alexander, you know, uh, this you know, looking at this idea of language and architecture was something which kind of went into the back burner. You know? Of course, Eisenman and those guys were also kind of looking at it, but from a very different perspective. You know? But uh, from looking at uh, the language of parametric is all about, you know, it has got this set of rules. And so this idea of uh, looking at no, when 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 no, right now when you kind of look at uh, parametric architecture is a rule based architecture. The rules, uh, no, uh, and the rules are very uh, uh, rules are not interpretative rules. Rules are very real rules. No, no, you need to put in the parameters. You need to feed in the parameters. And I think this is this has uh, no uh, in 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 nineties or you know 
uh, when when people started working with parametrics no it's not that people are not working with parametrics no there are there have been very different sort of uh, no but the tools have become much more uh, how do i say uh, handleable no that means the parameters uh, can be uh, very well defined when you when you feed in no so this kind of gave a very new life to looking at this analogy between architecture and language so uh again morphology would depend upon the form would depend upon very clear param parameters which you feed in you no know? one is the morphism itself the unit itself and the variation within the unit you no know? so you no know, you might say that you know i might kind of take this block of this by this you no know, this size by this size you no know? and uh when they come together when they combine together that means the rule of combination so if i kind of feed in a pattern in the rule uh, a specific parameter that it has to turn uh, 13.5 degrees as with uh, every course you no know, for example you no know, you might come up with a form which overall form which you don't have uh, you no know, which you have not anticipated but the form which has come from a very very clear rule parameter so that is one way of uh, so i think uh, no uh, this uh, the parametrics in that way with the uh, kind of tools which we have right now has taken this debate to a very different kind of extreme where then we only look at form then we will only look at and that is one of the major criticism of of uh, that uh, mode of architecture where you say that you become so obsessed with the tool that you forget the intention no and that is something which is a, a larger critique uh, with the way of looking at only form no no, no sometimes you do say that no you are only concentrating on form no you might criticize certain kind of modernist architects uh, no only from that perspective of form no it's very you know very geometric very banal very this thing no but again on other extreme you no know, if it becomes too much rule based then also you have a different sort of problem you know? so parameter the form based parameter has to have a certain kind of link with maybe the meaning maybe the use maybe anything else you no know? there has to be some sort of relationship which has to be there you know? so that's my uh, way of looking at uh, morphology from the present parametric uh, no uh, based uh, uh, approach to architecture now some architects be constrained follow philosophy instead of uh, language of elements what do you now this is something i think uh, uh, one very good person uh, to talk about it would be percy sometime i think we will get him on the board uh, you know where he would he can really talk about uh, this idea of deconstruction and the form sometime you know but again over there as well there are some sort there is some sort of uh, language you know it might be not you know the element not might be uh, the same element but then it is composed uh, and combined in a different way you know it plays out in a very different way uh, uh, and if you try to look at the 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 the, the linguistic uh, you know if you look at the work of a uh, uh, linguist like derrida from you no know, from whom uh, this whole movement uh, uh, you know kind of takes uh, references you no know, he uses language as a base you no know, and then uh, he deconstructs meaning you know in some ways you know. so not not necessary uh, uh, you no know, you modify the form you no know, but uh, you modify form to deconstruct meaning you no know. uh, you know if you want to kind of emphasize on something you don't really emphasize on something you know. so that sort of thing so again deconstruction in some ways has a very direct correlationship with the languages because the theory actually comes from the linguistic theory you know uh, the french uh, you know uh, linguist in some ways uh, so that's one thing and uh, so i i would say that you know follow they do every 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 uh, you know um, i think everyone follows a certain kind of philosophy philosophy um, how do i say philosophy is is a way of thinking you no know? is a way of thinking is a is a world view in which you think in a certain way 
to to see world to see phenomena to understand a certain kind of phenomena so deconstructivist uh, or um, any any uh, any sort of architect as, uh, saw um, um no that uh, particular framework or uh, to view the world uh, as a phenomenon so i think it is not only necessary to do with deconstruction but it is to do with even what we discuss in case of greek huh? Huh? Uh, so and philosophy as a language i don't know <laughs> it is too much i i don't have actually an opinion on looking at philosophy as a language and because i'm not a philosopher no so i can't really comment on it uh, no and i have not read many things <laughs> so i won't be able to kind of answer that question so i don't have any take on philosophy as a language no so uh, no but i do i do see that they are essentially world views uh, through which uh, no uh, you 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 uh, understand your environment uh, you understand the task at hand and uh, you look at Uh, the vocabulary which is available to you, and you try to make best out of your vocabulary. You know? And your worldview is definitely going to uh, affect uh, the way you use that vocabulary, the selection of the vocabulary, uh, and uh, uh, the way you are going to use those vocabulary. You know? So yes, the worldview in that sense, I am not going to use this word, uh, the word called philosophy, but a certain way of understanding and viewing world who definitely. or does definitely affect uh, the way you build no i hope i have answered this rupal singh so our language its analysis and description are confined to us sometimes it feels that it is not very inclusive and its relevance is not acknowledged by the larger chunk of population for whom we are designing this brings me to the question of penetration of this idea of language into masses beyond our fraternity Uh, question being are we living in a it's a very very interesting question it's a very very interesting question for, not only for architects but for everyone no so let me let me uh, no use again an analogy no uh, if you look at uh, language and if you look at literature no uh, do you uh, no if 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 i quote uh uh no uh, a poet no if i kind of look at poetry um uh, is it to be understood by all no is it to be understood by all is it to be you no know, so people should the primary mode of you no know, language is the purpose of language is to communicate so the poetry does it communicate you no know, what it is you know? so i think the, the 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 question over here uh, which which needs to be kind of looked at is uh, when we look at any sort of uh, you no know, say poetry or a prose you no know, is it expected that everyone is going to understand that and i think this is very very important one of the one of the key critiques and i think you are pretty much right one of the key critiques of um of of uh, uh, arts in some ways is um that it is not it does not uh, cater to mass in some ways so for example classical music you no know? no if 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 it's a classical music do everyone enjoy classical music not only indian classical music any classical music no? No? of course you do uh, no uh, no uh, you might uh, 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 enjoy uh, uh, no uh, someone might enjoy in bath or beethoven no or mozart no uh, someone but the other people uh, i don't know no but they do recognize some kind of uh chord there is something which strikes with them not necessarily with the whole thing that means uh no uh you 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 remember this in in uh, the in the ad of i think titan or some clock no uh, you have tin 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 now everyone would relate to that no and there is a sub some kind of upbeat about it no and as an experience yes no but if you are supposed if if 
if i tell you to listen to that piece of music as a classical music no you are going to have nahi samajh mein aata because there is always when we when we assign no when we frame something no as classical when we frame something as architecture when no there is an added burden to understand something so rather than being this naturally no uh, enjoy it no uh, so my my whole thing about uh, this thing is that most of you it's not necessary that everything should be understood no that's my personal take no sometimes architecture in that sense the buildings are supposed to be enjoyed uh, enjoyed living in and uh, inhabiting it no uh, and uh, uh, and a lot of these meanings uh, would be acquired uh, no that 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 the pragmatic parts of it no they would be acquired uh, in terms of their experiences the way you are going to perceive it no but not in a very conscious way no the same thing happens with art as well if you look at a miniature cell painting no again not everyone would kind of enjoy miniature cell painting no you say perspective ka hai no if you ask me no you say that no no but where is the perspective no no it is only no uh, it gets hidden behind whatever thing no i can only see one part of it no from 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 that uh, way uh, no so not everything has to be uh, understood in that sense uh, no and uh, the second thing is for any language it has to be uh, something which has to you no know, you need to have a consensus it needs to have a certain sort of consensus and it takes time to build consensus for example no uh, with the evident of concrete uh, and this whole idea of uh, frame structure no no uh, in in the early modernism no you could not have that consensus and perhaps it is only uh, people who really required that no for warehouses no you had to build no you had to use that kind of material no you had to it was not a part of uh, and there was a huge resistance uh, first of all people could not understand no they were saying oh this is it's not a house it's a warehouse no so not everyone would understand at the first instance no but after 20 years perhaps no everyone would realize the potential no of it no in a good way or bad way i think that is something which is a very no depends upon place depends upon individual no so i think it is even that part the third part is no how well someone is going to have how convincing it is uh, that means uh, no does the five points of kobuze really make sense no does that uh, no pamphlet no no he used to call this pamphlet architecture no no how 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 well are you able to convince no your own fraternity but also no so one of the critics of modernism is uh, in a way that uh, no it could not reach mass it could not really strike a chord with people but if you try to strangely if you try to see uh, 99% of built environment around us it is pretty much modern no in some ways it is very staple a uh, domino no domino has become a staple no it is indeed a very global uh, uh, vocabulary modern vocabulary so it's is that's what i am saying no but there are forces of history no like the way we are communicating in english no, no? before probably uh, 150 years it would have been impossible no so maybe you know thanks to Brit british no uh, so there might be other forces as well so it's not a very simple way of uh, you know relevance acknowledgement uh, you know uh, for the larger mass there are many factors to it you know there is there are very you know uh, history plays very important some events play a very important role you know uh, so but at least consensus among the fraternity is very important and there's a reason why sharing your work with a fraternity you know you 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 get uh, you get my point so uh, yes we are living in our own bubbles but bubbles do when they become they become big they burst you know and i think that is what we need you know becoming big uh, you know spreading ideas and then it bursts you know 
Sachin, may I make a couple of points with respect to what you just said? Yes. Please. One is, uh, I think I'm, am I audible? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're audible, very clearly. Uh, one is, you know, language can be seen in different ways, right? One is in terms of its components and so on, its yes. structure, like what yes. Seema was talking about. Yes. You know? yes, the syntax. Yeah. But on the other hand, it is also, it can be seen in terms of what it achieves, in terms yes. of expression. Yes. Right? What yes. it attempts to do, yes. its purpose, its purpose. function, not yes. how it is uh, it's done. put together. Yeah. So in that sense, and also the other example you were talking about, like, for example, uh, poetry, literature, art, you know, sculpture, for example, in those cases, you know, each individual has a choice in terms of what they like or what they don't like. Architecture exists as a tangible element that you have no choice but to interact with. Yeah. You know, this is something even like in Shomitra's lecture, he was talking about um, movies, using yeah. that as an example for uh, appreciation or not appreciation. But in all of those instances, we have a choice. Architecture has this problem, which it doesn't. Somebody has to use it, and some, particularly the public buildings and so on. So it exists, you know. And therefore, which is why the whole issue of uh, individual language uh, becomes a, a, a problem if it is not. I mean, I recently, let's say even up until the modern movement, or let's say the industrial revolution, societies, wherever they were, different societies had shared values and shared ways of building and shared ways of expressing themselves in architecture and the other arts, right? Today, we don't. So we have, for example, Christopher Alexander, even though his seminal work, which everybody knows about, is pattern language, yeah. But actually, if you look at nature of order, he's talking about no language at all. You don't, appre you don't approach anything with preconceived, preconceived notions. Notion. Or you don't, your whole attempt or your development as an architect is not to develop a language by which you will be recognized. Because you are not important. What is important is what you have done, you know? So there's a no language kind of a situation there. You act on first principles yeah. on what has to be done, where is it, what is available to you technologically, or how do you innovate on that, you know? So uh, I just wanted to make this observation that language can be also seen in so many different ways. The yeah. word itself, the word language itself means so many different yes. things, you yes. know? I, I One think is how it is constructed, but what is its purpose? And then does that purpose, is that valid? You know, is it important to have architectural language? You know? Particularly when we live in this world where there are no shared values at all. Yeah. Absolutely no shared values, you know? So um, we'll look at what's happening in the US. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to make this point. I think here. it's a very, very, and that is something which has been always, no, the continuity of a language. And you no, know, what makes language is the ability to share uh, it no, and I think this is something which uh, becomes a very very important. That how do you look at the notion of language in an era where we don't share values, but still the world is very well connected. Now, if the if if the world is connected, there is something which is shared. No, and I think this is where if you even see the languages, uh, the physical languages, some languages do ex go extinct because. You know, they are pretty much confined within geography or a certain set of people. So I think this also kind of poses this question, no language, uh, no, uh, no language in the time of, uh, no, in the times where the world is super connected, but not necessarily we share many things. I think this is a very interesting uh, 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 no, dichotomy uh, of our times, you know, that we are uh, hyper-connected, but we don't really share things. Uh, so 
there, there are no shared values or codes or probably if they are we don't uh, understand so that's one the second part which was very important in in uh, what your what you made this point was how much is uh, no uh, language for the sake of language no as, as a, a priori i think this is something which is very very important and that kind of goes back to that discussion of parametric no form for the sake of form no and does it really make sense uh, to kind of see architectural language in that sense no language as only way of language no? and if we see in in terms of the uh, the, the the conventional language you no know, i might use certain words uh no i might put together words in right way but if i don't combine them together with a certain purpose you no know, then it don't it does not make any sense so sometimes you do feel you no know, that some buildings are put together you no know, no just to make pun you uh, know at something you know. they they don't make any sense they are you uh, know uh, if i may use this word nonsense you no know. and i think um uh, <laughs> Uh, the whole postmodern movement was actually looking at this and somehow making, trying to make this pun. You no, know? uh, looking at you no know, this idea of again, uh, you no know, language for the language sake. If you kind of take this thing further, so what happens? You no, know? and almost of course a reaction to the uh, to uh, the modernism in in many ways. So I think it's again, uh, you no, know, I do agree that uh, it's very very important to really understand the purpose of. of uh, whatever you do you no know? and buildings definitely do have purpose you no know? you can talk uh, in reference to uh, the use the immediate use uh, you no know? uh, they do have meaning in terms of uh, the users uh, you no know? they are very tactile um, they have to function um, also at a certain the, level they have to the state of technology the state, state of, of the economy yes. you know, so many yeah. so many things you no know? And I think because it, is, otherwise it becomes realistic. That's that's yes. the kind of no, work that, that I was that looking is, for. Yes. So that you're yes. recognizable. Everybody knows that you've done this building. Yes. This is your language. This is what you're doing. There may be a history to that. I'm not denying that. But finally, you know, it what matters is 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 that building which is going to be there, which has a huge weight, has consumed a lot of resources, and is going to be there for a long period of time. Yeah. unlike a book you know of yeah. course there is so much that has gone into it but we have a choice you know yeah where is this thing exists it's tangible it occupies space you know it's there it's it's got a lot of weight and therefore the responsibility is actually more in that sense you know so you you know i have just written uh, i have just uh, written this it's a beautiful book a uh, very well written simple book yeah. the secret yeah. lives of building by edward hollis yeah. uh you know uh, this this kind of takes up you no know, uh, both your questions you no know, whether relevance of of language uh, uh, and the building itself you no know, uh, over the over over uh, um, space and time you know? uh, i think when we were discussing seema's question i did briefly mention about this you no know, that mm. you no know, mm. uh, sometimes building are yes. designed for that particular purpose but uh, eventually they transcend the purpose uh, you no know? Uh, if they can withstand the time uh, and and space you no know, they does do transcend the purpose and i think this is something which which is very very interesting in both way where then the language is not the end but it is a means to uh, realize something at that particular moment you know? yes. so i think that is that is a very very important point in some ways yes yes now it's anuj anuj has asked us language sometimes get involved over time evolve over time uh decades centuries even more with it being evolved it gets realized over time at the same time it might evolve from body of certain architects you know, intention of creating language in architecture is as to limit themselves to bring visual harmony in the building since while actually field of architecture we are not creating as much like the same code but it goes somewhere ahead so is it possible that the idea of conscious intention towards language in architecture be more detrimental and should be a latent force while uh being an unrealized and underlying force realization is time okay 
uh, Anuj, uh, hello. Yeah, Anuj, uh, I think, uh, no, you have written uh, a, a big chunk over here. Um, yes. So you are saying that, uh, no, what, what, what you are saying that, uh, no, is it, is it really possible that uh, uh, what you think, no, your intention about architectural language, uh, no, uh, should be the latent uh, force, no? Uh, yes. Then uh, you uh, think about that it plays out in time, no? Uh, over a period of time. Right. I think I think it's a it's a very uh, it's a very interesting proposition, and that is something which a lot of people now have started, uh, no, looking at, no. Uh, and it's it's not a new idea, no. Always the buildings uh, were seen to be. Uh, uh, no, especially classical buildings uh, were seen to be something which can withstand uh, uh, time. You know? they, 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 uh, and therefore, the buildings changed is use and you know, uh, the users change and therefore the use changed, you know? not necessarily right. drastically. You know? So there's a reason why the palaces now have become museums and uh, uh, will become something else. You know? You see, Haveli is becoming uh, uh, schools. No, right. um, so this has been always going on, but now with this, you no, know, what 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 uh, uh, Anjali also pointed out, you no, know, with this whole, uh, you no, know, we being in a certain kind of context where we are now very much aware about resources, uh, the efforts uh, to make and edifice, you no, know, uh, a building. Uh, the energy kind of, you no, know, the kind of efforts which go into uh, making of this, you no, know, how do we really see it? Uh, which, you no, know, and that has been, uh, you no, know, one of the key interests of the recent, you no, know, a uh, lot of architects, you no, know, they look at buildings as shells in some ways, which could, you no, know, take various kinds of function, you no, know. right? Of course. No, and it can withstand time. No, till the material lasts. No, if you say the life of concrete uh, right now, ideally is around eighty years. No, not necessarily eighty years. In our Indian condition, we consider it as a forty years. Mm. No, but, but no, in those forty years, uh, whatever we say, will it change? No, will can building take up other kind of functions? No, other kind of uses? No. And I think this is something which which is very very um, interesting, and it's a very good point. And that's also Edward Hollis talks about it. No, he of course takes example of something like Parthenon or Pantheon, no, uh, or uh, no, uh, something like Notre Dame. He's taking historical examples, but we can also see this uh, where uh, looking at buildings as shell, uh, no, uh, as something which are very malleable structures which can grow over a period of time. I think uh, Senate also talks about when he talks about this open city, you know, where he says that if you really want to make our cities very open, you know, uh, open in from perspective of time, you know, uh, where you don't have to always tear down the buildings, you know, then your building should, you know, be designed uh, in in a, in in how to say minimal way, you know, uh, right. which which can uh, you know take uh, functions, uh, you know. So how do you design a flow plate, you know, which could be used for multiple functions? You know? How do you look at this idea of services? You know? And services also keep on changing. You know? But of course, water is always going to you know, uh, work like water. You know? It's always going to leak. And therefore, you know, maybe air conditioning would behave in a different way. You know? So um, then this whole idea of putting together a building, uh, you know, the craft of architecture in some ways, comes into prominence where you say that you design something, but in a way, what do you fix and how do you fix? Mm -hmm. And I think this is also a very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 no, uh, uh, the, the, this is also very interesting uh, uh, thinking right now. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying that it's, it's a recent thinking. It has been uh, there for a long time. Where you say. Uh, there's a life cycle of a building. You know? But you say that, you know, if I'm going to look at a building, then I'm going to look at its life cycle, you know, where what can be uh, recycled, uh, what can be repurposed, you know, when I'm looking at 
uh, that thing is particularly very relevant uh, if you if you practice in a place like uh, germany or uk uh, you do find that very often because in some cases you are not able to demolish the building you know or it's too expensive to demolish the building and therefore you would like to repurpose and there are codes for repurposing as well you know so uh, i think this is uh, this is not something which and then this question of what is the relevance of language in that sense you know what is that language which can withstand the time and different kind of function the malleability right is 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 um is is a very interesting again uh, very interesting aspect of language hmm. without becoming the lowest common denominator exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but there are, you know anjali this is very interesting there are also people people who are talking about uh, looking at buildings as lowest common denominator hmm. for example for example uh, right now no uh, in 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 a uh, you know uh, some people might say that uh, you know especially you know buildings keep on changing no so uh, this whole idea of repurposing building which uh, was in uh, is in vogue in europe uh, you know a lot of industries have you no know, the manufacturing hubs are not operating anymore you no know? all of them have become service oriented industries right how do you look at this buildings no how do you look at this beautiful last span structures which you have with you right? mm. how then what is you no know, how do you look at how do you view language in reference to this uh, you no know, contemporary use i think these are very uh, you no know, fascinating questions no sure we should look at uh, a work of uh, i think is there in our library uh, work of uh, one of very dear friend julia setti who is again uh, a teacher at uh, polymy uh, who who looked at this idea of uh, no repurposing you know and you know and what goes into repurposing and then some of these questions which come up you no know, what to retain what not to retain you know right So, so I think thank you, thank you, Sachin, and you we've much. taken a lot more time, lot more of your time for discussion than we normally do. Yeah, but I think it's been very interesting, and yeah. it's a very open-ended subject, right? So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's difficult yeah. to come to any conclusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I think uh, it sh it should be like language; it should serve the purpose, immediate purpose, mm -hmm. but. it should it should grow uh, go you know? beyond that it go, yeah, yeah. yeah. i think this is something which is very but i think uh, uh, taking more time is uh, very welcomed we are pretty much in lockdown curfew <laughs> in ahmedabad <laughs> right <laughs> you right you have a choice right. yeah uh, so uh, but anyways i think uh, hope everyone is fine and uh, thank you very very much uh, i can see surya i can see everyone you know percy i can see percy as well kartik All right. Thank you very much, and see you. Thanks, Nilosha. Uh, thanks, Anjali. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you, Sachin. Hi, Surya. <laughs> hey, hey, Anjali. How are you all? Good. All good. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Sachin. It was a wonderful morning. Thank you. <laughs>